My name is Fusi Kurt, and one of these men is my father, the most decorated Air Force pilot of World War II. What is your name, please? My name is Frank Kurtz. What is your name, please? My name is Frank Kurtz. What is your name, please? My name is Frank Kurtz. Only one of these men is the real Frank Kurtz. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Currently starring in Bye Bye Birdie at the Paper Mill Playhouse in Milburn, New Jersey, Tom Poston. Peggy Cass. The distinguished author of Anyone Who Owns His Own Home Deserves It. That's Alan King. And Kitty Carlisle on To Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome once again, on behalf of all of us, to To Tell the Truth. Alan, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to our panel tonight. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here, bud. First time you've been with us. Yes. Right? I understand right. your first uh, television appearance of the season is going to be on the uh, premiere of the Gary Moore Show, right? That's right. Tuesday night, September 25th. Aha. Uh -huh. Pegging that down. I'll yes. be one of the watches. I'll tell you that. Sure. All right, Peggy. Nice to have you back, too. Hi, Tom. Good to be back. Hey, how are you? Kitty, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm All right, fine. good. <laughs> Open, up, Open up your envelopes. Take out your affidavit cards for the first time and follow along as I read. I, Frank Kurtz, am a retired colonel in the United States Air Force. I was stationed at Clark Field in Manila in December 1941 when the Japanese bombed and destroyed most of the B-17s based in the Philippines. From the pieces of the wrecked planes, we put together one ship and called it the Swoos. In the Swoos, I flew hundreds of hours in the South Pacific and finally flew her from Australia to the United States, breaking the Trans-Pacific record in the process. In the newer version of the B-17, named Swoos II, I led a heavy bomber group through some 60 missions in Europe. The original swoos is now in the Smithsonian Institution, and I ended the war with 25 United States and foreign decorations. Signed, Frank Kurtz. <laughs> Panel, we are all proud, I'm sure, to be able to uncover the identity of the real uh, Colonel Frank Kurtz, all of these gentlemen claiming to be that person, pilot of the B-17 named the Swoos. We'll start the questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. <clears throat> Prior to this show somewhat, I, <clears throat> I ask a question of a pilot. I'll ask it again. Number three, what is the name of the uh, upper turret in the B-17? The upper ball, radio, radio gunner user or engineer. Uh, the top turret? Yes, the name, do you know? The top turret, as much as I've ever known about it. What about you, number one? Do you happen to know the name of that turret? Who manufactured it? Uh, some of them are manufactured by Bendix. And the others? I don't know. Number two? Bendix. What uh, caliber bullet did it shoot, number two? 50 caliber. How many? I don't know. Peggy Cass. Uh, where did the Americans land, the first landing in the Philippines? Mm. Which number? The re oh, I beg your pardon. Number one. I've been off a while. <laughs> number one. Uh, well, we were already there when the war started. No, I mean when they when they went again. You know, when we when we returned. Oh, on the island of Luzon. I see. Number two. Uh, what kind of a battle was the Battle of Lady Gulf? I don't know. Uh, number three. Where is Mindanao? Mindanao, way out in the west. They are all pinpricks to most of us after a while. Um. Uh, very Number... heavily defended the target. Alan King. Number one, could you tell me uh, who Colin P. Kelly was? Uh, he was uh, an officer in the B-17s who was killed uh, at uh, Clark Field. Uh, Number two, could you tell me what medal uh, Colin P. Kelly was awarded? Congressional Medal of Honor. Uh, Number three, could you tell me who uh, General Ord Wingate was? Lord Wingate was a great general out in the far, out in the, certainly out in the east in the Philippines. In the eastern Wingate. Philippines. Thank you. Number one, could you tell me who General Lord Gate was and where he was stationed? Uh, in the South uh, East Asia Command. Kitty Carlisle. Um, this record is so impressive that I'm going to use this to refer to. Um, who is Macapagal, number one? Don't know. Number two? Number three? How long That's did it take you to come from Australia, number one? Uh, to the United States? Yes. 
It took uh, 36 hours and 10 minutes. And uh, number two, why did you call the plane the swoosh? I didn't. Uh, the press called it. Uh, uh, Any particular reason? Well, actually, um, no, it was put together from spare parts and... Uh, number three, do you, I'm sorry, do you know why it was called the swoosh? Yes, there was well, the ugly duckling and the, uh, the two got together and they had the swoosh and that's what that... All those planes were put together from Clark's Field and by the time we, we got that together, we had a... And that's all the time we have. So get to the business of marking ballots, if you will, please, right now, panel. Mark without change and immediately, without consultation, too, of course, and vote as you do so for number one, number two, or number three. Team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I only voted for number one because I felt that... Uh, that the, the reason that that plane got its name was from Swan and Goose, made up all of by the different parts, and I can't believe that the press would be responsible for naming this and having the guys that built it stick to that name. Maybe so. Peggy. Well, I voted for number three because it seems to me I remember a swoosh in a comic strip when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what it was made up out of. You know, those two things. Thank you. Alan, which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number one. He seemed to... Uh, be a little bit more exacting in the things he said. He knew that General Wingate was in Southeast Asia, as against in the Philippines, and uh, he knew Colin P. Kelly was uh, pretty close. And that was about the time that uh, the Colonel should have been in the was in the Philippines. Kitty, your choice. I voted for number one merely because he looked at his daughter with great love and affection. And although number two smiled sweetly at her, number three was rather severe. But that's the way they fool us. Maybe it is. Uh, I think it's number one. Well, let's find out. And, and to do it, to find out who is the real one, let's put uh, Susie Kirch to work again. Susie, would you come downstairs again, please, on stage? <laughs> now, Susie, Susie has over her arm her father's coat. So let's see which one it fits. thing greater than seeing the pride of uh, the father with his lovely daughter was seeing the pride of that lovely daughter about her father. <laughs> so, Lucy, you're about to start your college career, aren't you? Right. I'm entering the University of Southern California this fall. This fall. Mm -hmm. You've got some wonderful years ahead of you, and so has uh, Southern California with you well, there. Well, thank you very much, bud. God bless you and much happiness thank in your college you. career. Thank you for being with us tonight. Move along and find out about these other two now, but before that, I think you ought to know that Frank Kurtz also has represented the United States as a diver in two Olympic Games. Number one, uh, you've got the lion's share of the votes. May we find out what your real name is and what you really do, please? Uh, my name is Alexander McIlvain, and I'm an architect. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, may we have your real name and what you do, please? My name is Dave Cameron, a sports writer and author of the coming bestseller, Nine Saturdays Make a Year. <laughs> <laughs> well, we check the score, we find that you really skunk the panel, as the saying goes. You fooled them all away. That, of course, means four incorrect at $250 each. Anyone who isn't even a mathematician can tell you that's $1,000, gentlemen. Take it and divide it and enjoy it from Salem Cigarettes and on your way out a carton of Salem for each of you. Thank you very much for being with us. Good night and God bless you. Next team of challengers. These three men are holding baskets. One of these baskets contains a live cobra. <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Bill Haas. My name is Bill Haas. My name is Bill Haas. Follow along with your copies of this affidavit, if you will, please, panel. Yeah. I, Bill Hast, collected my first poisonous snake when I was 12 years old. I now have a collection of some 400 of them, and I'm a commercial producer of snake venom. I catch and milk the snakes with my bare hands. I have been bitten more than 70 times by 17 different kinds of snakes. I have built up such an immunity that my blood is often used as a life-saving serum for other snake bite victims. 
My collection contains the deadly king cobra. The bite of a king cobra will kill an adult elephant. I am the only known human being to have been bitten by a king cobra and survived. Signed, Bill Host. <laughs> Now, panel, these three gentlemen carrying their precious packages all claim to be snake expert Bill Hust. And let's start this cross-examination with Peggy Cass. If a person could play a flute, would the snake come up like in the movie? Which one number? Oh, uh, number one. Uh, yes, it has nothing to do with the sound of the music, though, but it's the sight of the flute. The and sight of the flute, but the baskets, they're down in the basket. I'm assuming seen? the baskets were open, if they I saw it. I see. Uh, hmm. Uh, number two, how do you milk your snake? Uh, we, we do it by, by hand. I know, but where? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> where what? I mean, I mean, you know... You get a little stool and walk up inside it. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we milk them in Florida. <laughs> Anything else? Ring. Did a bell ring? I didn't even hear it ring. I was laughing so hard. Alan. Uh, number three, do you sell uh, snake milk to baby snakes or what? I mean, uh, could you tell me, number three, who, uh, who buys snake milk? Well, research people, uh, universities. Uh, chemical research organizations. Number two, what do they use the snake milk for? Res uh, I mean, research is quite general. It's used for research, and it's also used as a painkiller. A painkiller. Number one, what? Kitty. Number two, uh, what is curare? Uh, karate, I don't know. Number, I, I just can't stand this whole idea. <laughs> uh, if the flute is not the sound that makes the snake come up, could you get the same effect with your hand? Like so? Number Are you one, me? yes. Oh. Uh, once the snake uh, came out of the basket, you probably could. You could. Yes. Number two, how much does an anaconda eat? Uh, an anaconda can eat as much as 90 pounds, but it can also go without food for quite a long, long time. Number three, how long does it take an anaconda to digest the food? Oh, about a week or two. Number one, is an ass poisonous, really, or is that an old wives' tale, thanks to Mr. Well, Shakespeare. Cleopatra found out, found out it was. It Tom is. Poston. Number two, what is a poisonous Australian snake? Do you happen to know? Uh, the most deadly poisonous snake in Australia is the tiger snake. Thank you. Number three, maybe you can tell us the names of two of the most deadly poisonous snakes in South America. Gaboon viper and mamba. Would you, South America. Number two, would you agree with those two? I would agree with the gaboon viper, but not the mamba. Name another dangerously poisonous snake in South America? Uh, the most uh, in uh, South America and Central America, the Mexican moccasin is one of the most dangerous uh, and poisonous snakes of all. That's all the time we have, and I think it's just as well, because the looks on your faces are really quite uh, different than any we've ever had on this round tonight. I'm glad you're enjoying it so much. Now, will you get to the business of marking your ballots? Right away, please, panel, without further questions, and of course, without consultation. Voting as you do for number one, Number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Everybody got a ballot marked? Okay. Tom, which one did you select on this I voted for number one. He looks more like a snake charmer. <laughs> <laughs> and Peggy, what about your vote? Well, I voted for number two because he seemed so sincere about the snakes. Huh? All right. Alan? Well, I voted for number two because I think number one looks like a snake charmer. That's why. <laughs> I voted for number one because I do believe that number two was right. They probably have this farm in Florida, and he has a tan, and he looks like a very brave man to me. All right, there we have it. All right, I'll tell you what. Since we've got all the votes in and given our reasons for it, as to finding out which of these gentlemen is the real snake expert, will the real Bill Host please pull your cobra out of the basket? Oh. Just look the other way. Just look the other way.
There's the real one. How about that? Has he been milked? <laughs> well, wait till I get some cookies. I'd like to have a glass. <laughs> Oh, dear. I think you might like to know that Bill Haas operates the world-famous Serpentarium in Miami, Florida. And, uh, oh, those looks. I wish we had a good snapshot of that. Tom, you've just had it, haven't you? Thank you very much, Bill, and our congratulations. Uh, number one, would you tell us your real name? Because you, as a group of challengers, have uh, hit the panel good and hard for the second time tonight. Uh, my name is Harold Steinberg. I'm the co-author and publisher of the Psychiatric Coloring Book. <laughs> Now, number two, may we have your real name and what you really do, please? My name is John Driscoll, and I'm a sales representative for Blue Cross and Blue Shield. <laughs> you had nothing to worry about. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to check the score very quickly and easily. Four incorrect votes, $250 each. That's another $1,000 from Salem Cigarettes and a carton of Salem's for each of you. Gentlemen, thank you very much for and being with us. <laughs> <laughs> Good night and God bless you. Now may I present our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Allison Palmer. My name is Allison Palmer. My name is Allison Palmer. Follow along with this affidavit, if you will, please, panel. I, Alison Palmer, have been United States Vice Consul in the Congo during the past two years of bloodshed and confusion. Those hectic days thrust some rather unusual duties upon me. I flew into the bush country to rescue American missionaries trapped by the rioting. I served as cook for 150 refugees crammed into the embassy. I rescued three American journalists under sentence of death in Leopoldville. I was beaten by native troops for insisting upon the release of a foreign employee of an American company. And I hid the Belgian ambassador in my office for 24 hours while angry Congolese soldiers searched the town for him with fixed bayonets. Signed, Alison Palmer. <laughs> Well, panel, you heard these three ladies, as did I, each one claiming to be Alison Palmer, former vice consul in the Congo. Let's start this questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Thank you, bud. I'm proud to meet whichever one of you ladies represents our country so beautifully. Number one, uh, of which province is uh, Adula the head? Of Leopoldville. And number two, Mr. Trombe? Mr. Trombe is the prime minister. Uh, number three, what was the name of our ambassador when you were there? Uh, the ambassador was uh, Rusk. Rusk? Yes. What was his first name? Uh, Ciro. Number one, do you agree with that? No, our ambassador was Edmund Gullion. What, may I have to hear that again? Our ambassador was Edmund Gullion. Gullion. Number two, can you tell me what's the name of Gizenga's wife? No, I don't know her name. Number one? No, I don't know. Number three? Tom. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you, bud. Number one, what was the cause of that rioting in the first place? The Congolese army mutinied. Number two, under whose direction? Under the direction of uh, General Albert Chambé. What relation is he to the uh, Prime Minister? I don't believe there's any relationship. Same name, that's all. Yes. Number three, can you describe the situation in the Congo at this present time? Well, as of today, uh, uh, Katamba has decided to go along to accept the UN, to accept what they uh, have offered. Thank you. Number one, would you tell me, please, why were those journalists <laughs> under sentence of death? They had been asking too many questions. Number two, that was sufficient to cause them to be charged with a death sentence? Yes, with the conditions as they are. Uh, number one, could you please tell me the nationality of the UN officer who, who resigned from the UN troops over there in the Congo? He was Indian. Uh, number three, do you agree with that? No, I don't. He was uh, from the one of the tribes. He was an Indian. Uh, number two, do you agree that the man who resigned his commission uh, was Indian? Uh, a commission of what? Well, he was an officer with the UN, a general. Oh, yes, he was Indian. I see. Number one, uh, uh, what? Alan. Yes, uh, number two, could you tell me uh, what is Kikiu? Kikiu is one of the six provinces. Kikiu. Number three, could you tell me what Kikiu is? 
Uh, Kiu is one of the provinces. No, not Kenya. Kikiu. Number one. Kikiu? Yes, Kikiu. Number one, could you tell That's me? That's a tribe in Kenya. Thank you. Could you tell me, number two, could you tell me in what direction geographically Katanga lies in ref in the, as, of, as against the rest of the Congo? To the east. Pardon? To the east. To the east? Yes. Number three, would you tell me where Katanga lies? Uh, it's uh, more or less in the central center. Could you tell me, uh, number one? Pray there's no time for telling anything more, so just get to the business of marking your ballots. Will you do so now and immediately and without change, panel? Voting as you do without consultation for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, everybody voted quickly, huh? Okay, Tom, which one? I voted for number one, Bud. I thought that her answers were the most uh, reliable in some, some cases anyway. Peggy. Well, I voted for number one as well because of Kikiu, because she did seem to know, but I thought that officer was Irish. <laughs> Alan, which one did he you He was like? an Indian from Ireland. <laughs> you never heard of him? <laughs> uh, I voted for number one as for the same reasons that Tom did. Her answers were most correct. And well, finally, I voted Kitty? for number one because I thought, in yeah. spite of Peggy's question, that the in, the, he was an Indian, and I believe it was Mr. Gullion, and I think those are the best answers. All right, there's unanimity now. You've been split vote before and all wrong before twice. Let's see what it happens this time, because unanimity can be, you know, a real tough road to crawl back from, whether it's for or against. So we'll find out now, since the votes are all cast for number one, just exactly which one of these ladies is the real former vice consul in the Congo. So will the real Alison Palmer please stand up? Uh. You did it. Well, I'm sorry that it isn't... Uh, I'll tell you what you we girls will have to do, I guess. You'll have to speak to the uh, first two rounds. They won $1,000 each time. <laughs> Maybe you can knife it on that a little bit. But in any event, of course, uh, you've played a wonderful game with us, and we had fun, and we're very proud to meet you, young lady, believe me. Very proud. As Kitty said, you've represented our country bravely and extremely well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kitty. Number two, may we have your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Gloria Sapio Bosch, and I'm a radio television producer. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, your real name and what my, do you do? My real name is Russell Lee, and I work for Hatteras Boat Company. I sell boats. Boats! I've more or less indicated what the score is with no incorrect. In that case, of course, from Salem Cigarettes, you receive $150. But I do hope that uh, the pleasure of being on the show has made up for it somewhat. You certainly contributed a great deal to our entertainment, both from a dramatic standpoint, pride, and good humor as well. On your way out, you would also receive a carton of Salem for each, from each of you, for each of you. Thank you for being with us. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> Good time speed by rapidly, and that certainly did tonight. I'm afraid we haven't any more time, except we would like to tell all of you, for college credit or just to increase your understanding of economics, tune in the College of the Air, starting soon on most CBS television stations. The R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company is very pleased and proud to be one of the financial uh, sponsors of the College of the Air. For full details, if you would like them, simply write to Box 1601, 1601, Grand Central Station, New York 17, New York. I guess that's it. Good night, panel. Good night. Good night, good night bud. Bud. Thanks for being the wonderful people that you are, and brightening my evening, at least. And may I say to you, good night, and don't forget to join us at the same time next week, and also every afternoon at, on our daytime show. And until I see you again, this is Bud Collier saying good night for Salem Cigarettes and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. has been brought to you tonight by Salem, the 
cigarette that refreshes your taste. This is Johnny Olson saying goodnight from the Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded. Thank <laughs> you.